got here a Dyson DC30 vacuum cleaner, which is very dirty. Let's take it apart and see how it can be cleaned. First, release this and we can access this filter. And that's the motor part. We'll put that to its side for now. This can be washed, as it says there. This one has already been washed. Now, to get this apart, you release the bottom catch, which is what you normally do for emptying it. Look at that. Someone's been sucking up some good stuff, and that reveals this little lever in here, which you can pull back to remove this canister. A small hook there. Now, these seals can be pulled off so they can be washed. Uh, if the screws still exist, you can take this front piece off, but the problem is they fill up with crud. Uh, I think they need a bigger screwdriver, T8, T10. Too much crust down there, I can't even tell if the screw's in there. One of them's come out. Yeah. I don't know. So to remove these seals, you can just pull pull them off and then you can get in there and clean them out, give them a good scrub and then push them back in. Okay, now this part, there are clips and there are four of those that hold this piece on. need a small screwdriver to help with those. Wow, look at all the crust that's in there. So that's got a, a plastic rim around there which is supposed to seal against the inside edge here. And it's just all caked in dirt all around the little nozzle thingies. Now the next part is this comes off and there are three clips holding that, which are these. And there's a little flat part there where you can get a screwdriver in to release them and it's quite tricky because it's retained by the edge of these cyclone things are pressed through so it, it doesn't tilt side to side very easily and then the third one is behind here which makes that one even more difficult to get out there we go Wow, definitely needs a clean. Don't need that anymore. Now we get the T10, and there's a whole bunch of screws down there you can undo. And then a final screw on the end here, but that's the smaller one again, T8. That's a long black color screw. Now that comes off. Should be able to get out six screws. Put those to a side. Now this top part comes off, and there's a seal there that can get cleaned. And it's filled up with dust. That's all broken down. Everything can be washed and scrubbed to make it nice and clean. Uh, it might be difficult to get in there if you can't get this front piece off. Um, I don't know if somebody's already tried and messed up the screw head. Or if there's something blocking access to it, something's going on. Oh, this screwdriver went straight into it. I think the screw head was just so full of stuff that the proper screwdriver wouldn't fit. So, supposedly now that comes off, but... Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I don't really want to break it. I think it's... there's ridges there which make it look like it's being clipped in from this side, but it's not very willing to unclip. There we go. Now there's a little o-ring, and there's this flap which is fully bunged up with fluff, so that needs a real good hosing down. Alright, let's go wash all this stuff out and then we can put it back together. OK, 
Okay, so it's all washed. Let's put it back together. Come up pretty nicely. All right, we'll put it back together. This part is reattached, screwed back in. Now we'll get the seals on the bottom of here, which need to be pressed in. So that will seal onto that part so that the inner cyclone is separated from the outer one. This is just going to get filled up with dust the first time it gets used, isn't it? So what's the point in cleaning it? Okay, now we've got this one. Pull it around here, we've got to get it through this clip part. Under there. Needs to be rotated slightly. Okay, that fits pretty good. Okay, now this part. We've got this thing. Work out which way around this goes. I don't think it really matters. But you can see the teeth mark from these holes. Put it back on the way it was. That way it will uh, should seal up better into its original position. Like that. The mounting hole screw hole has to go in line with that, that's important. Now we've got some screws to put back in. T10 for these. We'll just swipe this across a magnet a few times. Okay, so we'll get that lined up again, the screw hole on the back, that positioned, and then we'll do up the screws, and we'll do them back, back until they click into position before tightening them, so that they ride in the same track that they came out of, so they're not cutting a new thread in the plastic, otherwise it won't last too many more goes if you cut new threads each time. They're all done up. Now we've got this one in the back, T8. Same deal, wait for the click, and then tighten. Okay, now we'll put this thing back on. This has a notch there to go over this part. So we'll push that down until it clicks. And then this part, I don't know if that has a way around. It's got a notch there. But it's otherwise fully symmetric as far as I know. I don't know, I'll put the line towards that. Maybe I should have looked at that first. That snapped into position without any problems. Now oh, that clip there is wider. Maybe that was supposed to go towards the back. No, yeah, all the slots are the same. So that means it's done, does it? We can put this filter back on. I think that goes on the motor side. Now we need to put that into here. Open the dust collector, and then that hooks on and clicks into position. And then this hooks on. Done! Not bad. Let's take apart the motor and have a look at it. That's what we really came here for, wasn't it? We don't want a vacuum cleaner, we want to look inside things. So I had one screw there, which I took out. Now, we've got to get a whole bunch of clips around here undone. And I'm not really sure how we can do that without damaging them. Wow, big clips in there. There's something in there. Okay, so we need to pull out one side, the other one goes back in, so we need to stick something in there. Is this worth it just to have a look at the motor? Destroy this whole thing. I wonder why they made it so difficult to get into. It's not very good for servicing or recycling, is it? Yeah, I don't know about this. Maybe just look at other people's videos on how to, of what's inside it. 
somehow they got it open. There we go, look at that. Wow, big clips. Look at that, we did it. Mostly. That. Wow. There's a little plug. There's a hand crust in there. Some of my sweaty hands must have been touching this thing. There's a power switch, and then there's the battery. Okay, so one of those black ones goes to the switch, and then the other two go, which is grey and brown, go down to the battery terminals. And there's a screw in there, which is kind of covered by this battery releasing thing. That might have just wrecked. if this comes out so there is another switch there so there must be wires going in down there for it okay so you have to get this part out before the battery terminal part will come out this is another switch yeah, the terminals are still stuck i don't know there's probably no reason to take those out anyway i just wanted to run this with without the cover on it, just for fun. A lot of air going through that. There you go, a little jet engine thing. Looks like the motor is just one winding because it seems like they're joined in parallel, although they're wound in opposite directions. So the both ends, or one of each of the windings ends, goes there to one terminal, and then onto the board. And then the other two ends go onto that same terminal there, and go onto the other side of the board. So that's it. There's some capacitors there, which are glued down to the bottom. The cans are glued down. Rubicon 1000 microfarad 35 volts and it looks like there's FETs on the other side it's being conformal coded and some kind of thing there probably a little microcontroller or maybe it's a motor drive don't know because of the conformal coding it's really hard to read the writing if it's there in the first place I don't know if it's worth trying to take these screws off uh, we'd have to cut through the glue that's holding the capacitors otherwise it won't come off this is will hold it I'm ready to go. Don't really want to wreck this, so perhaps we'll put it back together and try not to wreck it while putting it back together. Just peel this thing back onto it. Okay, that's good. And then it just shoves down that hole. It's just a rubbery thing. Interesting, all the air has to go through that little hole in the middle. Yeah, good luck with that. Other people have taken the motor apart. You can see it has a very small rotor part in the center. Presumably it has a magnet in it. Since this is still working, well it was working, I don't see the need to take it apart that far. Maybe the capacitors need replacing at some point, but yeah, probably not unless you very heavily use this thing. How far have we got to go? Got a few millimeters. I don't even know how far down it was when we started. Now all the plastic is wrecked. All the bite marks from the screwdrivers. Why is it such a long screw? Just for the little tiny bit that's holding down the switch. That's weird. And there's this bottom switch so that it won't turn on if you don't have the canister thing installed. There's tracks for the wires to go in. Is it gone in the right place? Nobody knows. No, it hasn't gone in the right place. Are the wires in the right place? Probably not. Okay, there's back in. The battery fits. We haven't wrecked it yet. Now, this thing, the battery releasing button. Whoever had this before me must have had very dirty hands when they were using it. There's this crust all over everything. Okay, we'll try and get this battery release button back. There we go. And there's little notches for these wires to go through. Now, does this have to go down any further? Probably does. 
I'm going to have to find a way of cleaning up all this stuff that got messed up severely. So that it's just flat again. Then it won't feel sharp. Do the same along this thing. Okay, and what about here? Yeah, maybe we should have done this before we put the wires back in. Find a way of holding this so we can get the blade angle right. Quite big chunks there. Did I cut the wire? No, not yet. That's nice and smooth again. This side was fine to start with. Still hand crust inside there. Scrape out the hand crust. It's probably in here as well. Oh yeah, the hand crust. Okay, we already did that bit. So we're gonna tidy that up. And this surface here, which is not really wasted, so that was fairly flat before. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now what I don't know yet is, is, is this far enough in? Why don't we just look at another one? Here is another one. Paste always have a few of these lying around. So that seal is pushed right up against the front of that opening there. Which is not the case with this one. It's in. So I think that means we've got to push it in more. Push it around the edges. Rock it in. Hey, it's coming through now. Pretty much the same now. Okay, that's as good as that's going to get. Let's just check it again to make sure we haven't ruined it. That's still good. Maybe we should have the battery in when we put this back together that it's holding this button in the nice position. So let's put the back on and then never take it off again, hopefully. It's not easy to get off. So clips in, clips in there first. Now we've got to plug the wire and don't forget that. It <laughs> would be very sad if we didn't plug that in for the little light there on the top. Light works. Now we push this back together somehow. Are we going to need a lot of force on it? There we go. It's back together. Yeah, it looks kind of gross, but tough. We can put that screw back in. Another really weirdly deep screw. Or this weirdly long screw. Okay. So that was Dyson vacuum cleaner tear down, cleaning, and reassembly. And what's going on? So I'm happy about something now. Yeah, after all that, it's not going to work now. Oh, we've got to put the filter in it. Of course, so that must be why that switch exists there. We can't run it without the filter. Okay. 